on his tour. I spoke to Dan via phone from Brisbane a little earlier today and asked about New York and what it was like finding his way around there. It took me a little while to get into, into the scene there. Um, but the good thing is I'm a piano player, so uh, I can you know, spread myself around a little bit, do jazz gigs. There's a lot of cabaret there, obviously. Um, so I do a lot of cabaret stuff and you know, backing shows as well. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of everything there. and uh, Being a piano player, I, I find I'm a, a little bit more in demand than, say, a trombone player. Or, you know. And that's been really useful for just having enough cash coming in, has it? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's gigs there seven nights a week. So it's not like there's a shortage of work. That That's you know, right. And, find it and, and know the right people. Yeah. So, but meeting the right people is the, is the, is the crucial thing. Did, did that take long? Didn't take that long, actually. Um, I mean, once you do a good job, the word gets around. Um, so I've got my you know, fingers in a lot of pies there. Um, uh, the cabaret thing. I also worked on cruise ships for a while. I've got quite a few connections there. That's a very good gig to get when you're just getting started, isn't it? It's a great education in, in itself because you're playing every night of the week uh, and you're in a situation where it's just one rehearsal then you're playing a show in front of 800 people. So in some ways, I think it's actually a, a tougher gig than a Broadway gig. Well, you get a few more rehearsals, you mean, and you get used to what you're doing. Yeah, well, I mean, those guys get two weeks to look at the music, um, whereas uh, a cruise ship gig one rehearsal and then you're playing the show. I just noticed you were music director for uh, Nathan Lee Graham. A and what was that show? He does a, a variety of different shows at places like 54 Below and uh, the Metropolitan Room, which are like the main cabaret venues in New York. Uh, so I do all his musical arrangements and um, uh, you know, get his shows together. He, he's, um, he's a Broadway singer. He's also a, a Hollywood actor. So tell me about your influences and how you developed your own distinctive voice. I think in a, in a lot of ways I'm um, self-taught. So um, in actual fact, I was in, uh, in Levin there for a couple of years um, and there weren't that many jazz uh, bass players in Levin at the time. So I taught myself how to play left-hand bass. Um, I didn't realise that. What, so you could accompany yourself? Exactly. Ah. Exactly. So I'd, I'd split the keyboard and play left-hand uh, walking bass. Um, and I didn't really realise at the time that not many guys do that. So... In a sense, you know, living in small places like, like that, um, I think that developed my style as much as anything else. Um, now, obviously, when you go to New York, you, you're hearing great musicians all the time, so it tends to elevate your standard, um, especially when you get to play with them. You've done your own arrangements of some of the, you know, the classic jazz standards of the Great American Songbook. Mm -hmm. Do you tend to perform those much these days, or is it mostly your originals? I mean, I, I do probably 50-50 when I'm in New York. Um, Obviously, that's where you know, a, a lot of that music was written originally, so there's a, a pretty big call for jazz standards over there. Uh, and I try to... Does it depend on the club? In some clubs, they want original music more so. Yeah. But in general, people will tend to you know, gravitate to, to music that they know. But do you notice a difference in reaction from your audience if it's a familiar work? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, I, I'm doing um, shows over here in Australia. I come to New Zealand and I tend to find people actually want to hear the original songs um, more so than I, I thought they would. Um, so you know, I just gauge the audience and um, yeah, pick the songs out as, as I think it's going to be appropriate. But um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a nice, a nice feeling when people really want to hear your stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it must be really great. Right. I'm sorry? It must be really good. It must be really rewarding that you get a good reaction. It's, uh, it, yeah, it's the best feeling as a songwriter to, to have people come up to you after a gig and say they really enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that for me. Talking to Dan Bolton, Australian singer, songwriter and pianist who is bringing mm -hmm. uh, his, um, himself to New Zealand for shows right through the second half of January, playing quite a few different places with local musicians like... Mark, like Mark, Mark Lockett on drums. Now, Mark, yeah. I know you've ha hung out with the New York a fair bit. Yes. Is, is, um, do you do work there as well? Yeah, I work with Mark over in New York. Uh, and uh, he, he wanted to come back down under to the, uh, well, to get away from the cold and see his family as well. So um, we thought it'd be a good idea to, to do this tour together. So I've got Mark with me um, for the Australian gigs and the New Zealand gigs. Uh, and then along the way we get to... Um, 
work with, with local guys, people like Roger Menon, um, yeah, some, some great musicians you know, in all the various cities we're going to be in. Let's talk about your venues for your New Zealand leg of the tour, Dan, right. starting in uh, Christchurch on the 21st at the Orange Studio. Do you know most of these places, or have you had some local help to sort out your venues? I've had some help. Um, Mark, obviously, being a Kiwi, he's um, given me some connections there. Uh, I've never really played too much down in Christchurch. I used to go down there um, uh, for the Marlborough Wine Festival with, with a more of a pop funk band back in the day. Um, and we'd go down to Christchurch a little bit, but uh, I've never played at Orange Studio before. Um, but we're down there, and then we're up to uh, Capity Coast. Yeah, and a playhouse in Capity Coast. Exactly, yeah. So, do, yeah. And then a theatre also in Palmerston North, the Globe. They're, what are theatres like for, for a show like yours? What, what are those theatres like? Yeah, what do, what, do you think that you work just as well inside that sort of space? Look, I think so, because um, even though it's jazz, um, for me it's all about the song. Um, so yeah, you'll find with a lot of jazz recordings that can take like 10, 15 minutes. These songs are, are basically three, four minute songs. Um, so I, it's um, it's a jazz gig, but it's it's a show, and I'll talk between the songs and um, try to engage the audience. Um, so I think my my kind of music actually works well in a in a theatre type setting. Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday night Saturday, Sunday, it isn't one day or night 24-7, 365, there will always be The deli downstairs, it's always there for all that you need They never go counting sheep in the city that never sleeps The lights will be always on from dusk till dawn At five in the morning, everyone's yawning but down the stairs on the Upper West Side, where I reside, they're always there. Wednesday and Thursday and Friday night Saturday, Sunday, it isn't one day or night 24-7, 365, there will always be The deli downstairs, it's always there for all that you need They never go counting sheep in the city that never sleeps The lights will be always on from dusk till dawn At five in the morning, everyone's yawning but down the stairs on the Upper West Side where I reside, they're always there In the deli downstairs In the deli downstairs 